Amen. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Behind your regrets and mistakes Come today, there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling Bring your sorrows and train them for joy From the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a Savior is in
Good morning, everyone. My name is Brady Witten, and it's my privilege to welcome you to worship here at First United Methodist Church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. On behalf of our congregation, I welcome you to this time of worship. Thank you for spending your Sunday morning with us. During worship, it's our hope. It's our prayer. That you will encounter God. That you will come to know Jesus. Through a verse. Through a song. Through a story. Through a prayer. Through a person. Through a smile. It's time to praise. It's time to pray. It's time to worship.
Well, good morning. I want to welcome you to the America Street service here at First United Methodist Church. You know, as believers, we are called to be history makers. Amen. We are called to be world changers. And this morning, we're going to sing about that. So no matter where you're at, we're going to lift our voices. And we're going to proclaim Jesus as King. So let's sing that to him this morning. Is it true today that when people pray, cloudless skies will break, kings and queens will shake? Yes, it's true, and I believe it. I'm living for you. Let's sing this together. Is it true? Is it true today? That when people pray, they'll see dead men rise and the blind set free. Amen. Let's agree. Yes, it's true. And I believe in. I'm living for you. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a history maker in this land. I'm gonna be a speaker of truth to all mankind. I'm gonna stay. Is it true today that when people stand with the fire of God and the truth in hands, we're going to see miracles, we'll see angels sing, we'll see broken hearts. Making his story. Oh, yes, it's true. And I believe it. I'm living for you. Oh, I'm living, living for you. I'm going to be a history. A speaker of truth to all mankind. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna run into your arms, into your arms again. Let's sing it again. I'm gonna be a history maker. Come on, declare. gonna be a speaker of truth to all mankind. I'm gonna stand. I'm gonna run into your arms. Into your arms again. Hey, good morning, everyone. My name is Brady Witten, and I welcome you to online worship here at the America Street Service of First United Methodist Church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So we are uh, in this journey through the season of Pentecost, 
And Pentecost is a time where we, uh, we celebrate the power and the presence of God's Holy Spirit. And it is my prayer that you will encounter that spirit in worship today and that you will be renewed in Jesus' call to live your life out of God's kingdom love. Let's go to God together in prayer. Lord, may we know the presence of your Holy Spirit here with us today. May we be open to your leading, sensitive to your speaking, and alert to your calling. Lord, we invite the same power that was at work in your disciples on Pentecost so long ago to be at work in us here and now. Lord, pour your Spirit upon us. You are welcome here. In Jesus' name we pray.
great uh, traditions of the church in uh, worship is a, is a time that we call passing of the peace. And it's really just an opportunity where we acknowledge one another, we share the love and peace of God with one another. And so uh, I want to invite you, if you're at home, to share the peace and love of, of Christ with those who might be there with you. Uh, or, 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 and also, uh, text message people, messages of peace and love, put them on social media, and let's share the love and peace of uh, Christ with, with the world. And I want to offer Peace, peace be with you. So I uh, want to continue to invite you to interact with us in a variety of ways. And the uh, first thing I want to say is we're really glad that you're here. And if you are worshiping us for the first time, I want to welcome you to worship online with First United Methodist Church and just say we're, we are really glad that you're here, here right now. Um, so there's a, a couple of links that are available, whether you're watching online, whether you're watching on the uh, Facebook, on YouTube. And uh, one of those is a Connect card. And uh, that's a way that you can just share some information with us. Give us your name, maybe an email address, and let us know that you're here. We just want to be able to say welcome. Uh, you'll also see some different options uh, to give us prayer requests. And uh, those prayer requests, when you fill them out, are kept in, in confidence. Uh, but I also want to say to you that if you want to just lift, out, uh, lift up names or lift up prayer requests that you have to the community around you, go ahead and put them in the comments this morning. We're happy to pray uh, for people that, that you're thinking about or situations that you're thinking about. And, uh, and also want to continue to encourage you to practice generosity, especially during this time of financial anxiety. Uh, I think when we are fearful about money or fearful about finances, that's a time in particular that we need to make sure that we're, uh, we're, we're making sure that the money doesn't get into our hearts. And one of the ways we can do that is by giving some of it away in, uh, in the name of God. And so I hope you're practicing generosity and want to invite you to remember First United Methodist Church in that practice. And you'll see three options uh, to give right on your screen. Uh, you can either go to our church's website, you can text a gift, or you can mail a check to the church. Uh, so I want to let you know about two things that are going on. The first one, I have committed that our church will be uh, engaged in an anti-racism campaign that's being led by the United Methodist Church. And uh, last week was the beginning of a series of webinars, and last week took place on Wednesday. This week, on, uh, on Thursday, there will be another webinar at 2 p.m., and you'll see an infographic on your screen about that. And if these are conversations that you're interested in being a part of, I want to invite you to, to register for that. Registering really is just putting in your name and hitting go, um, but want to encourage you to register and, and participate in that. And also want to let you know that uh, on August the 9th, we are going to have what we call Jump Start Sunday, and it's a normal part of our fall routine where uh, we kind of get back to Sunday school for children, get back to Sunday school for youth and adults, and uh, we are gearing up for all of those things to take place online, but want to encourage you to uh, begin again to prepare yourself to get in that rhythm of participating in Bible studies and classes and Sunday school, and we'll have more information on that coming up. Uh, so will you join me in prayer as we ask God's blessing on our offering? Let us pray. God of compassion, uh, sometimes, especially when we're anxious, we are reluctant to place our trust in you. We feel more secure trusting in the things of this world, in our ability, in our strength. And so we thank you for this moment in worship where we're reminded uh, that it is your provision that sustains us. It is your love and your grace that hold us. And so, Lord, I ask your blessing upon the gifts that have been given and I ask your blessing on the ones who give. Lord, help us to trust evermore in your heavenly grace. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Creep. 
forth and start before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of light. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born in the vapor of your breath the planets form if the stars were made to worship so alive i can see your heart in everything you've made every burning star a signal fire of grace if creation sings your praises, so will I. God of your promise, you don't speak in vain, you syllable empty or void. Spoken on nature and signs, follow the sound of your voice. And as you speak, a hundred billion creatures catch your breath, evolving in pursuit of what you. If it all reveals your nature so alive, I can see your heart in everything you say. Every painted sky, a canvas of your grace. The creation still obeys you so alive. salvation you chased on my heart through all of my failure and pride on a hill you created the light of the world abandoned in darkness to die as you speak a hundred billion failures disappear when you lost your life so I can find it here if you left the grave behind you so will I I can see your heart in everything you've done. Every part designed in a work of art called love. If you gladly chose surrender, so will I. I can see your heart a billion different ways. Every precious one, a child you died to save. If you gave your life to love them, so will I. 
like you would again a hundred billion times. But when measure could amount to your desire, you're the one who never leaves the one behind. Let's go to our God in prayer. Lord, I thank you. I thank you that you always keep your promises, God. You were so faithful, so true. And we know that you never leave the one behind. God, it just amazes me each and every day how important we are to you each and every one of us. Nothing we could ever do can ever separate us from your love, God. We thank you for your presence in this place. right here where we are. And God, as we continue in the service, I just ask that your Holy Spirit would speak through Brady as he brings your message, God. And that you would begin to open our ears to hear, open our hearts to receive your word. Lord, let it soak into our hearts, into our lives. Help us to apply it. And God, help us to share it each and every day. We thank you right now for your love and your mercy and your grace. It's in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. So our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 13th chapter. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. As he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seed fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of God and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arise on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns... This is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So uh, for a few weeks, uh, we're doing a deep dive into this parable of the sower and the seed. And uh, today, I want to focus on uh, the rocky ground, which Jesus talks about in verse 20 
and 21. Now, one of the things that Jesus makes very clear to to his disciples and to the people who follow him is that those who follow him, who live his way in the world, are going to experience opposition. Uh, And here in the parable of the sower and the seed, he says that that opposition will make some people fall away, that they they won't stick with it. Now, I pointed out last week that the word of the kingdom, that's the seed that's being scattered here, is good news. And that that, for me, is an essential part of understanding uh, what Jesus' message and what Jesus' way is about. And I want to encourage you, if you didn't get to see that message, to go to our church's website and, uh, and you can find it there. Just, just watch it. Uh, we're reminded today uh, that the, the good news or the, the word of the kingdom is also something we receive with joy. Um, So here's a little puzzle for you. Here's a little question. What good news of the kingdom that you and I receive with joy will bring opposition in this world? think, Think about that again. What good news of the kingdom that we receive with joy will bring opposition in the world? So I'm amazed at uh, how much of uh, our lives and how much of the world that we live in is structured around in-groups and out-groups. Um, the easiest way to get along in the world, look, listen, here's a little tip for you. The easiest way to get along in the world is to learn uh, to love what the in-group loves and to hate what the in-group hates. Uh, and that usually includes hating some other group. Now, go with me here for a minute. Uh, this is something I think we all learn in high school, don't we? So, uh, if, if you're in with the jocks when you're in high school, then you have to love what the jocks love, and you have to hate what the jocks hate, right? So, uh, you have to love sports, you got to wear the right clothes, you got to listen to the right music, and part of being a part of that in-group is that you all hate the same people, right? It's usually like maybe the, the nerdy people in school, or maybe it's the band geeks. But look, hey, before but the exact same thing is true on the other side, too. If you want to be in with the nerds and the band geeks or whatever that other group is, you also, you got to love what they love and hate what they hate. So you love, you know, you, you love the music that they listen to, you wear the same clothes, you do the same things. But part of it also is hating the same people, right? So we hate the jocks, right? Um, when I moved to Louisiana, I found out very, very quickly that if I wanted to be in, in Louisiana culture, I had to become an LSU Tigers fan. It was just, just the way it was going to be, right? And so uh, I had to love what people love about that, and I had to hate what people hate. So uh, I bought purple and gold clothes. That, that, that was an adjustment, i got to tell you. Uh, I learned how to spell go. Do you know how to spell that? It's G-E-A-U-X, and uh, so is anything else that has the O sound to it, right? Um, I also learned that there were things I had to hate. So anybody know what it is you just got to hate when you're, in a, when you're in with the LSU crowd? You got to hate Alabama, right? I mean, you, you, you got it. I mean, so, so again, it's, it's amazing to me how many of our structures, how many of our relationships function like this. Love what the in-group loves, hate what the in-group hates. And very often that involves hating or, or sort of, uh, you know, looking down your nose at some out group. I think one of the places we see this the most clearly in our world today is in our party politics, right? So if I'm a Republican, I'm supposed to love the American flag and love guns, and I'm supposed to hate Hillary Clinton and Democrats. Now, if I'm a Democrat, I'm supposed to love Starbucks and Ellen and I have to hate Donald Trump and Republicans, right? I mean, it's just, you, you see how these things all kind of go together? It's this, it's this in-group, out-group thing. Now, we don't like to admit this, but listen to this. Hatred is a part of the glue that holds our world together. It's just a fact. Think about it. Hatred is part of the glue that holds our world together. Uh, are you familiar with the famous quote, Nothing unites people more than a common what? Enemy. A common enemy. Now, some of you take, may take issue with the word hate. You may think that's, a, that's, that's too strong. You know, I don't, I don't really hate other people. You know, I'm, I may just not like them very much, or, or maybe, you know, I just kind of don't pay much attention to them. But what I want us to understand is that seeing people as other at all 
is dangerous for the human heart. So there was a classroom exercise uh, that took place in 1968, shortly after the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. And it was led by a now famous educator by the name of Jane Elliott. Uh, and it exposed just how dangerous our in-group and out-group thinking can be. So uh, one morning when her third grade uh, students entered her classroom, Elliot set the blue-eyed children apart from the children with the brown or green eyes. And she actually went as far as to have the blue-eyed children put a, a construction paper band around their arm to kind of mark them. Uh, and then she announced to the classroom that the brown-eyed people are the better people in the room. She told them that the brown-eyed people were cleaner and that they were smarter. Uh, and then she gave them this explanation. She said, oh, the kids will need an explanation for this. So she said, eye color, hair color, and skin color are all caused by a chemical. And she wrote the word melanin on the board. Uh, and she told them that the more melanin a person had, uh, the smarter they were. So people with darker eyes were smarter than people with lighter eyes. Uh, and, and she went on to tell them that, look, blue-eyed people, they're lazy. They sit around and they do nothing. You give them something nice and they wreck it. And she said as she began to kind of explain this worldview to the kids that she began to notice kind of an emotional and, and, and relational chasm developing. Uh, to test out to see if, if her experiment was working, Elliot asked this question. She said, so let me ask you, do blue-eyed people remember what they've been taught? And one little boy, uh, a brown-eyed boy, got it right away. He said, no! Uh, she went on to explain other rules for the classroom, such as that blue-eyed people, when they drank out of the water fountain, were going to have to use paper cups. And one of the kids was a little confused and said, why? But one of the brown-eyed kids got it right away, because we might catch something from them. Uh, she began to notice that uh, the brown-eyed children began to be unkind to the blue-eyed children. When one of the blue-eyed kids messed up on an arithmetic problem, the, one of the blue-eyed kids actually said, Oh, what do you expect? He's a bluey. Uh, later in the day, she said she noticed the experiment began to have other effects. Uh, there was a smart little blue-eyed girl who had never had a problem with her multiplication tables before, but she really started struggling. And she said she also kind of began to slump in her seat just from this simple division that she'd made between blue-eyed and brown-eyed people. At, rest, at recess time, three brown-eyed girls gagged up on that little blue-eyed girl. You better apologize to us for getting in our way. We're better than you are. Uh, and the blue girl immediately kind of apologized. Uh, Elliot's experiment uh, really uh, reveals the dark side of, of this in-group and out-group type of thinking. It also shows how quickly uh, that in-group and out-group thinking can become bias, and not too far after that can become hatred. Uh, it is a dangerous thing. Uh, and so I just want to ask you, have, have you ever been a part of an in-group? Has there been a part of your life where you're part of the in-group and you kind of felt a little, you know, a little full of yourself, right? I mean, I've, I've experienced that. Have you ever been part of the out-group and, uh, and, and maybe felt put aside or less than? I've had that experience, too. Uh, if you want to learn more about Jane Elliott's classroom experience, just Google Jane Elliott, blue eye, brown eye. It's a fascinating study, and I, I encourage you to do that. Now, look, I want to be clear about something as we continue, kind of continue this conversation about in-group and out-group stuff and differences between people. Uh, I want to be clear about this. Uh, I am not saying that we should ignore our differences. There are a lot of people out there who say, that's right, we shouldn't, we shouldn't see difference in one another. Uh, the truth is, people are different. There are pink people, there are brown people, there are tall people, there are short people, there are Spanish-speaking people, there are English-speaking people, you name it. There are a lot of differences. People have different experiences and, and different, different paths that they walk in life. Uh, what's dangerous is not seeing each other's differences. What's dangerous is when we begin to think that one group is better than another group, or that another group is less than my group. That's what we have to watch out for, right? And, and as Christians, we celebrate diversity, and we celebrate the differences among us, but we've really got to be careful that we don't let uh, our differences turn into in people and out people. Uh, 
in-group and out-group thinking is dangerous for the human heart. And that's exactly why Jesus refused to participate in it. Now listen, there were all kinds of out-groups in Jesus' day that he could have hated, okay? Uh, Let's just pick one. Let's pick the Samaritans, okay? These were a group of Jewish people who had married foreigners generations before, uh, and they also had stopped worshiping in Jerusalem. They were despised by the Jewish people. They were so despised that when a Jewish person was traveling from the northern part of the country to the southern part of Israel, they, have, they would have had to go through Samaria, that they went out of their way, miles out of their way, so they wouldn't step foot on Samaritan soil. But Jesus didn't do that. Jesus refused to hate the Samaritan people. He walked through Samaria. One time while he was journeying through Samaria, he met a Samaritan woman at a well, and he revealed himself as the Messiah to her. He made a Samaritan the hero of one of his most famous stories. He refused to give in to that hatred. Or let's take the Romans. They were another group that Jesus could have easily hated, right? Uh, They were pagan people who had violently overthrown Jesus' homeland. Uh, Jews were actually forbidden from going into a Roman's household. If they did, it made them uh, ritually unclean. But again, Jesus refused to hate them. Uh, He actually told his disciples that if a Roman asked you to carry their pack, if a Roman soldier asked you to carry their pack, carry it two miles. He told his disciples to pray for them. Pray for your enemies, he said. Uh, One time a Roman centurion came to Jesus and his servant was sick and Jesus healed the servant. And then Jesus says this about the Roman. He says, I have not seen such faith in all of Israel. Uh, And when Jesus was being crucified as he hung on the cross, he looked down at those soldiers who had nailed him there and said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. And so I just want to ask you to think about, you know, is there, is there some person in your life that you've, you've kind of put on the outside, or is there some group of people that you kind of have put on the outside? Uh, can you imagine loving them the way that Jesus loved those soldiers in that moment? Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Jesus could have hated anyone. He had his pick. He could have hated tax collectors or prostitutes or Sadducees or Pharisees or Judas. I mean, someone, come on, Jesus, anybody, join us in this. But he refused. He refused. Um, Instead of playing by the world's rules, Jesus played by a different set of rules. See, in this world, there are in-groups and out-groups. But in God's kingdom, every single person is God's beloved. Uh, In this world, uh, we use hatred as a way of uniting us. Think about that. It's true. We use hatred as a way of uniting ourselves. But in God's kingdom, we use our love for God and our love for our neighbor as ourselves as a way of uniting us. Uh, In this world, uh, we look at other people as our enemy. Let me tell you this. In the kingdom of God, do you know who the enemy is? Hatred itself. So this is the message that Jesus proclaimed and that Jesus lived. Uh, And by doing so, he disrupted the kingdom of this world. This isn't the way things are supposed to operate here, Jesus. And he paid the price for it. Uh, And what I want you to know is if you live that way, if you live Jesus' way, you're going to pay the price for it too. You will be opposed also. So I asked earlier, uh, what good news of the kingdom that we receive with joy will bring us opposition in this world. What good news of the kingdom that's received with joy will bring us opposition in this world? And really the answer is pretty simple. Do you know what it is? It's love. Uh, But not just love for some, love for all. Uh, So let me bring this home a little bit. Uh, I think like many of you, I am deeply troubled by the tone of our national dialogue right now. Uh, It's Republican versus Democrat. It's mask wearer versus versus non-mask wearer. It's all lives matter people versus black lives matter people. I could go on and on. Uh, The hatred is palpable, right? The name calling that we're doing, in my opinion, is juvenile. 
Uh, but this us versus them, this in-group, out-group thing that we're doing is dangerous. You hear me? It's dangerous. Uh, what I'm even more concerned about than all of that, though, are the Christians that I see participating in it. Uh, I don't know how some people can say, I love Jesus in one moment, and then spew some of the vile things that they spew in the next moment. I, it's beyond me. See, as Christians, we are called to live as citizens of a different kingdom, uh, of God's kingdom. The way of the world are, is not God's way. So yes, the things we're debating in our nation right now are important. They have real-life implications. Yes, we should stand up for people, and we should stand up for things that are right. Yes, we should argue. We should disagree. We can even cry, and we can even yell. Got no problem with that. But here's the thing that we can never do as Christians. We can never give in to hatred. Uh, we can never demonize other people. We can never diminish or dehumanize other people for any reason. Because when we do that, when we do that, uh, we are not living uh, by God's kingdom love. So listen to me. Uh, you and I are bound for heaven. As Christian people, that's our destiny. That's why Jesus died. That's why Jesus came, to open a way for us to be in eternity with him in heaven, right? But here's the thing. There are going to be Republicans and Democrats in heaven. Uh, there are going to be Black Lives Matter and All Lives Matter people in heaven. Uh, I, I hope and I pray that Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump will both be together in heaven. And when we get there, all of this hatred and all of this division and all of this us and them and in and out is going to be gone. When we're in heaven, we're going to love one another. Uh, and we are called as Christian people, to begin to live that way now. Uh, so do you want to know uh, what will bring opposition in this world? Uh, Republicans love a Democrat. Democrats love a Republican. Uh, if you want to stand up for God's kingdom, all lives matter people. Love a black lives matter person. Blue lives matter people. Love a Black Lives Matter person. Mask wearers love a person who refuses to wear a mask because it's that kind of kingdom love uh, that will change the world. But be warned, be warned, if you choose this way, uh, if you stop othering people and start listening to them and caring for them, respecting them, standing up for their dignity no matter how strongly you disagree. If you choose love, if you choose mercy, if you choose respect for people that you don't like, be prepared. The world is not going to like it, uh, and you will receive opposition. But don't give up. Don't give up. Uh, that kind of love may not be the way of this world, but it is God's way, and it is the way of God's kingdom. Will you pray with me? Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for Jesus. Uh, we thank you that he came to be the embodiment of your kingdom and the embodiment of your love. Lord, we thank you that he refused to give in to hatred uh, and that in that refusal, Lord, he includes me and he includes everyone who's listening uh, as God's beloved. And so, Lord, help us to know that love in our own lives. Help us to extend that love to others. Help us to not make enemies out of people, uh, but to understand that our greatest enemy is hatred itself. And, Lord, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Is it true today that when people stand with the fire of God and the truth in hand, we're gonna 
misty miracles We'll see angels sing We'll see broken hearts Making history Guess it's true And I believe it I'm living for you Living for you A speaker of truth to all mankind. I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna run. All right, everyone, I want to thank you for joining us for worship here at America Street, and uh, I wish you a great week. But hear this final blessing. So what good news of the kingdom that's received with joy will be opposed by this world? It's really pretty simple. It's love, but not just love for some, love that tears down all the boundaries and borders, love for all. Uh, And if you live that way, you will experience trouble and you will experience persecution. But don't give up because that kind of love may not be the way of this world, but it is the way of God and God's kingdom. So go and may the blessings of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.